how are we ranking the top five video streaming services? We're looking at basic plans without any big add-ons. So we won't be looking at Amazon Prime with HBO and other channels added on. No bundles either. That would be weird. Weird, I say. At number five is Amazon Prime Video. If you're paying for Amazon Prime two-day shipping already, Prime Video is a fine little service. At $9 per month on its own, it's so-so. There are some high-quality Amazon originals. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel delivers great, fast-paced comedy with an outstanding cast. There's also Fleabag, which racked up a bunch of Emmys, including Outstanding Comedy Series and Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. I also recommend Forever with Fred Armisen and Maya Rudolph. It's really fun. Its movie library is okay and has some high-profile films that hit theaters like The Big Sick. Amazon Prime also offers Thursday Night Football and will be live streaming New York Yankees games, according to a report. That's not too shabby. Coming at number four is Hulu. It's six bucks for the basic version, 12 for the version without ads. When it comes to getting the latest from broadcast networks like NBC, ABC, and Fox, Hulu is the place to go. It's like paying a service to DVR almost everything on TV at once. Apart from TV, Hulu has quite the library of movies. It's not just a bunch of lousy flicks just there to pad a catalog. At the time of this recording, Hulu had titles like Creed 2, Mission Impossible Fallout, A Quiet Place, and Sorry to Bother You. There is one bit of warning with Hulu. As far as I'm concerned, the Hulu app on Apple TV and Roku are just not great. Let's leave it at that. At number three is HBO Now. It's a bit pricey at $15 per month, but you're paying for quality here. First up are the current HBO television shows like Succession, Barry, Watchmen, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Then there are the older titles like Game of Thrones, Veep, and Six Feet Under. Additionally, as this is HBO, it gets big name movies pretty quickly. Right now it has Us and Shazam. More importantly, it's picking up Pokemon Detective Pikachu by the end of the year. See, big name, Pikachu. On top of that, you get comedy specials, documentaries, and Sesame Street. We will definitely revisit this topic when HBO Max comes out, because that could change everything. Number two is a new guy, it's Disney Plus. If you're a Marvel fan, a Pixar fan, a Star Wars fan, or a general Disney fan, Disney Plus is a no-brainer. It's cheap, it's got a great catalog, and the app is okay. What more could you want? Mm, maybe a bigger selection? You say, wait, there's more to Disney. It bought Fox, what about all the Fox stuff? I'd say, you're right, but Disney Plus has its limits. The service will not have any rated R content. That means you'll never see Alien, Die Hard, or Logan on Disney Plus. So while Disney Plus has an impressive catalog, it will be limited to PG-13 adventures. Now that's a nitpick. For a brand new service, Disney Plus is off to an incredibly strong start. Also, Baby Yoda. And at number one is the big one, CBS All Access. Are you looking for new Star Trek? CBS All Access. Old Star Trek? CBS All Access. Yes, CNET is owned by CBS, and no, it's not really number one. That'd be crazy. Number one is Netflix. Built up over years on third-party content, Netflix has created a huge library of originals. Basically, Netflix has diversified very well. It pretty much has something for everyone. Kids shows? Sure. How about Dragons, Troll Hunters, or Voltron? You want comedy? Netflix has tons of comedy specials from top comedians like Ali Wong, Mike Birbiglia, and John Mulaney. Want a nostalgic sci-fi horror show? Stranger Things. Want something like Goosebumps? How about Creeped Out? How about some crime shows? Try out Mindhunter or Narcos. Want to mess up your brain? How about Black Mirror? Or even worse, Fuller House. Original films are a little iffy, but it just added probably its biggest movie, The Irishman. Huge stars, huge director, and lots of accolades. I don't know how often Netflix will release a movie of this caliber, but it exists, and it's on Netflix. If you want to know more about Disney+, Plus, check this out. The whole streaming landscape is changing. This list could be very different next year. Who knows? Maybe NBC Universal's Peacock is the future. I'm Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online.